Hi, this is Mark Weitzman. I want to do my uh, final problem from the exercises on finding lectures on physics on gravitation and ellipses and orbits. Um, this is problem 1032 and it's the last one in the section so it's probably one of the harder ones. And the problem reads as follows. It's desired to send a solo probe into orbit with a perihelion distance of 0.01 AU and having the same period as Earth, so that data recorded during the flight may be transmitted to Earth one year after the launching date. With what speed V0 and in what direction alpha relative to the Earth's sun line should the probe be launched from Earth? The orbital speed of the Earth is 30 kilometers per second. Okay, so there's a lot to digest in this problem. And let me write down some of the information that we had. For the probe, the, the uh, perihelion distance is 0 0.01 AU. AU stands for astronomical unit, e, unit, and if it's the same as the mean distance of the Earth from the Sun, that's also 1 AU. So that's that. Now, the period of the probe is equal to the same as the period of the Earth, which is equal to one year. This is the key to the problem. Um, if you remember in the previous problem, I wrote down Kepler's third law, which basically says t squared is proportional to a cubed. Now here's the interesting thing. We're working around the sun. If the period of the probe is equal to the period of the Earth, and the proportionality constant only involves gravity gravitational constant and the mass of the Sun. Um, so we're given that we have the perihelion of the probe which is one hundredth of an AU and the probe and the Earth have the same period. Now this is useful because we have from Kepler's law t squared is proportional to a cubed. a is the same I'm sorry we know t is the same therefore a has to be the same because the gravity and the mass of the Sun are the same constants. So A of the probe is equal to A of the Earth. And this will help us a lot. Now, I drew a diagram here to try and figure out what's going on, but it's not to scale because it's kind of hard to do. As you'll we'll see, the eccentricity is like um, 0.99, so it's kind of hard to draw to scale. but. The circle here is the Earth's orbit. The Earth's orbit is nearly circular. And when the Earth is at a position like here, it, it's going in this tangent direction. Let's say it's going counterclockwise. You have to launch a probe, and the probe's orbit is going to end up being an ellipse like this. And the reason why I know that the ellipse is horizontal is because the distance, here's the Sun, this is the center of the circle and also the focus for the ellipse. But if we're on an ellipse and, we're, and the 1 AU is the semi-major axis, then if we go back to this diagram here, you can see on this ellipse, the only place where your 1 AU, 1 A, 1 semi-major axis away from the sun is right on the horizontal part of the ellipse. So we launch the probe on this horizontal part of the ellipse. The Earth has this velocity. The Earth is going like this. The probe has to have this velocity. And therefore, this is the velocity of the probe in its orbit. And therefore, we have to launch at this angle. So I drew that here, launching at this angle. And the problem is asking us to find what is the launch velocity and also the angle alpha between the radius vector from the Earth and the launch velocity of the uh, probe. So that's alpha. And um, we've got one more thing that we need to establish, which is that, as I'll argue, V probe is equal to V Earth. Now why is that so? Well, they're launched at this point in time. 
the potential energy from the sun, since they're at the same position, is the same. So the potential energy is the same. And um, the orbital energy, each orbit over here has the same energy per unit mass. The orbital energy, the energy of an orbit only depends, is a function of the semi-major axis A. That's all it depends upon. Whether you're an ellipse or you're the Earth, this orbit and this orbit have the same energy. I'm always talking energy per unit mass. So, because these things have the same potential energy and the energy of the orbit is equal to the kinetic energy plus the potential energy, at that point they have the same PE so they have to have the same KE. KE. So it's a, it's a chain of reasoning. It's not so obvious, but once we have the period is the same, then the semi-major axis is the same. The semi-major axis is the same means the energy of the orbits are the same. Since they start off with the same potential energy, they have to have the same kinetic energy. So the velocity of the probe in its orbit, the velocity of the Earth in its orbit are the same. We have to find out V launch. And this angle here I do here is theta. So now we just use some trigonometry. Um, v launch squared is equal to V probe squared plus V earth squared minus 2, this is the law of cosines, 2 V probe V earth. Now V probe and V earth are the same, so this is equal to 2 V earth squared, and we were given in the problem that the velocity of the earth was 30 kilometers per second. So this is 2 V earth squared times 1 minus cosine theta. And um, so now we, for another thing we need to determine from this diagram is what is theta. And just looking at, um, oops, a little tangled up there. Just looking at theta, this angle, this is perpendicular and this is perpendicular because this is tangent, this is a circle. So this angle is also equal to this angle theta and we were given that the perihelion distance is 0.01 AU therefore this over here is 0.99 AU remember the semi-major axis is the Earth's semi-major axis which is 1 AU so this is 0.99 AU and that gives us that sine of theta is equal to 0 0.99 AU divided by 1 AU equals 0 0.99 so this gives us the angle theta, which works out to be theta equal 81.89 degrees. Plugging into here, we get that the V launch V launch is equal to 39.32 kilometers per second and we need to find out this angle alpha and it's just a matter of geometry this is the velocity of the earth and the velocity of probes these two sides are equal so these two angles are equal this angle is theta so this angle is 90 minus theta over 2, which makes this angle 90 plus theta over 2. This angle is the complement of theta, which is 90 minus theta. So we're left with um, alpha over here is 180 minus 90 minus theta minus 90 plus theta over 2 and this is equal to theta over 2. So we have our 
answer for, for the velocity of the launch and alpha is equal to theta over 2 is equal to 40.95 degrees, half of that. And uh, so that's the solution to this problem. The problem itself is not that much calculation other than one law of cosines, but you do have to think through everything on how it works. And then the key is noticing that you have the same period. This is in a sense, I said we weren't going to do any problems on transfer orbits, but this is like a transfer orbit. We're sort of transferring to an orbit. The usefulness of this is that it has the same period as the Earth, but it will come much closer to the Sun. So if you want to study something on the Sun, the probe will be like within one hundredth of uh, 150 million kilometers, so it will be like 1.5 million kilometers from the Sun at its closest point but still come back to the earth every time and you can get the data or whatever. Okay, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Mark Weitzman. Uh, you may have noticed my sh shirt change to uh, edX. I just want to um, correct something that I did in this video. Um, the answers are slightly off and um, what I neglected is this is the final launch velocity that we want the probe to have. Everything up to this point is okay. But we have to launch the probe from the Earth, so it has to get out of the Earth's gravitational potential. So, to do that, we need to have that the initial launch squared over 2 is equal to what I calculated there, relaunch, let's call it final, squared, and we have to overcome the gravitational potential well of the Earth, 2g mass of the Earth over the radius of the Earth. So. When we plug in this, if I plug this into here, I actually get that V launch is equal to 40.88 kilometers per second instead of the 39.32. We have to give it a little more energy to get out of the Earth's gravitational pull. And the book gives, the book answers, the book answers are uh, 40.8 and 40.9 degrees. The book isn't always calculating that accurately, so I think, I think this is an accurate, a more accurate answer. and. Um, so I'm um, sorry for that correction, but uh, I thought I would uh, go back and add this to the previous video. Thank you.